In this video, we are going to discuss about the seven important API testing best practices that I have learned over the 10 plus years of experience. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to the Testing Academy. My name is Pramod, and if you want to learn about API testing, Selenium, and if you want to become a great software tester, you are at a right place. Welcome to the Testing Academy again. In this video, we are going to discuss about the API testing best practices, and I'm going to discuss about the seven important tip plus a bonus for you guys. All right, so let's get started in this one. The first one is basically the it's not a best practice. It's actually a very important point for you guys, especially whoever wants to become an API tester or it's already doing the API testing, right? You have to pick the right tool API tool. I'm going to discuss about what is it. So if you are someone for example, if you are suppose you are a manual tester, right? And you are you are you are right now switching towards the API testing, then I think the postman is a very right tool for you guys. And if you are someone who is advanced, who, who has little experience in Java also, right? You can go towards the rest assured also, right? And here are the couple of other tools like Catalone Studio, as well as we have a cloud tools like Runscope, APIG, and many other tools which are available in market. So my point here is very, very important. You have to basically research about which tool you have to use okay so i'm going to give you a very simple scenario when i was in one of the company all right and uh, I, I had a nearly around three years of experience at the time there was a there was a requirement where uh, we have to do automation for an api and it was a very limited api i mean to say it's just had a crud operation okay so if you don't know about crud uh, make sure you watch the api testing using postman series where i have discussed about what exactly is a crud operation right and how you can test that uh, crud operation right and there was only very minor requirement and they don't require very advanced uh, what we call very advanced uh, testing right they don't require anything so uh, related to like catalon studio or rest assured are very advanced for them only the postman was enough at the time so we have chosen the correct tool because uh, also, the team was not comfortable with most of the team were not, not comfortable at the point with the Java as well as uh, the new libraries and the patterns that uh, API automation mostly have. Right. And at that time, it was very, very important to choose the right tool. So that's what I'm telling you. Make sure you are choosing the right tool for your API automation as well as for your API testing. OK, that you need to take care of. Second important point is test for the failure, guys. Why you guys are not doing it? I mean, if you are doing an API testing, you have to test for the failures. What do you mean by this promote? It basically means make sure you understand how your API will fail. This is really, really important. And you have to discuss with the developer. The first thing that I generally do whenever, whenever uh, there is a particular ticket that I have to test this API, right? And these are the endpoints. This is a payload. Uh, first thing I ask to the developer is give me the uh, how this API can fail. Can you can we have a discussion on this? And generally, whenever we are discussing this thing, right, we'll, we will get to know that uh, these are the edge cases that can be edge cases where this API will fail. OK, this input this for this input, this API will fail. And I get to know about it. And I think it's a very, very best practice. It, it's very great, uh, I would say, approach to test an API also. OK, so let me know if, you, if that works for you guys also. And also for failure, I mean to say that uh, you have to check certain uh, hard validations. What do you mean by this promote hard, vali hard validations? Uh, if you have an API, for example, suppose you have a CRUD that you want to uh, test it out for in API testing, right? So make sure you are adding a something called as JSON schema or XML schema validations. So what are the advantages of it? I think I had a discussion uh, many times in my videos of API testing using Postman. You can check it out on Testing Academy. But hard, value, hard validations basically check for your data type, your structure of an API. If there, it is not null, null, you can check patterns. You can check the regex and other things, right? So you are basically adding a hard check on the APIs that they shouldn't be fail or if there's any change by developer, it should not affect your API response. Okay, so those things you can change, check in this one. Make sure, right? Make sense? Let's move on to the next point, which is basically exploring the API. Make sure whenever you're testing the API, you explore the API first. So that's what I have told you in the first one also. If you have chosen the correct tool, then the important point here is to explore that API, okay? So, 
exploring the api basically means you have to play around with the crud you have to play around with the positive test cases you have to play around with the negative test cases also so this is really really important sometimes what people do is they just check for the positive test cases and they completely miss the negative test cases whereas i would suggest you to start with reverse where you play around with the api you just try to fail this api first and in the end you can check it out the positive scenario because positive scenarios are already done by the developers so that's really important that's what i one of the important point. okay uh, don't ignore the security failure failures guys this is really important i think most of the people while doing the api testing they are ignoring completely this thing that your apis are basically vulnerable to some of the security attacks so this is a one of the screenshot that i have basically pulled up let me zoom out a little bit so here you can see they are discussing about couple of uh, how often you should perform the api test right uh, continuously two times a day three times a day weekly i mean they are doing it multiple times and if you note it down data security and the security point of view they are basically telling you that you have to do it continuously you have to check for the access security endpoint security and data security point point of view so i have created a specifically a video about how you can check your apis for security test cases uh, there is a one more thing i think i have discussed is this checklist uh, where uh, how they have mentioned about how you can check your api for uh, authentication access control uh, through the burp suit uh, through the oap stop and all the things related to it, like how you can check your endpoints for security vulnerability right in this uh, checklist as well as there is a video also that i have created in the past where you can check it out okay so that really really important for you guys move on to the let's move on to the next one which is discuss about the stress and performance test so this is actually a very very good practice you can ask to developer what will happen if there are hundreds of requests per minute hundreds of requests per second what will happen if i uh, basically start making this request for 1 an hour 1 hour 2 hour basically i put a stress on the system and have you checked your performance and all so many time this is actually not required many times when you are doing the api testing right this is completely out of scope for you because you are probably are testing the functional testing functional testing point of view but i am saying if you are working in a startup right if you are working in a very small company where you don't have a specifically separate stress or performance testing team then it's really really important that you should highlight the security as well as stress testing point of view you can ask developer you can ask pms that guys i think stress testing and for security testing is really important and we should do it so make sure you include in your practice that you should be asking this question if they if they have the answer for this it basically means that yes they have already tested out for the stress and performance test or probably security test but it's your responsibility as a qa that you should bring this uh, point to this right it's a really really best practice it's a really really good practice for you guys that you are putting this okay now comes to the next point which is test testing with the maximum inputs maximum input basically means you have to test for positive test case you have to test for the negative test case right you have to check for the nulls and there is another video that i have created like uh, test cases for api where you can where you can check for the mav range you can check for json schema validation parsing data jsons http code and many 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 test cases right i have discussed already on this right so these kind of test cases and i think you can read more about here where uh, i have basically added couple of points here also what are the test cases for especially for the apis right so you can note it down or you can search on the testing academy api test cases so you will find that video and watch it that video basically contains how to write the test cases manual test cases as well as how you can automate them in, okay separately so that's really a great practice uh second last one which is don't ignore the monitoring on a what exactly it is promote so uh generally i'll give you this one scenario so we had a we had an api in one of my company very big company and that api was working fine in the asian side of it but that api was not working in the american uh, side i mean to say on the european side or american side that api was not working so we get to know what exactly is what, what, what exactly is the problem there right their server at the time was not working properly or it was they had like a uh, old code at the time okay so what exactly it means is if if a person basically in europe he is getting the different result with the same payload in but that is actually incorrect whereas the person who is making a request in the asian market for example asian market means mumbai singapore and all that api was giving the correct result 
So you have to monitor your APIs. So basically means is that you have to monitor them regularly as well as you have to test them on a location basis also. So this include uh, both of it. I think monitoring as well as location based. L location based testing you have to also do. Okay. And check your response for a different location also. I think I have, I have mentioned already here, right? You have to check it definitely. All right. So last, let's plan uh, last one, which is a bonus one for you guys, which is plan your API testing, how you can plan it, right? Uh, you need to create a test plan. Very, very, very important guys. Let me tell you this thing. If you are right now watching this, if you want to really, really become a good API tester, right? Whenever there is a API testing requirement for you guys, there is a Jira ticket that you got. Okay, this API, you have to test it out. Please prepare a test plan for it. It's really important. Even if you are in a startup, you have to prepare this document. I have prepared it many times on my videos, API testing using Postman, where you can see the test plan as well as test cases for the API. Please go through it. And you will see that you need to prepare your test plan, test cases and test strategy. How you are going to do that? Test strategy basically includes what kind of testing you will do as well as how you will do it, right? You need to mention all the things. So all the information you will see in the 30 days of API testing videos, right? Uh, this, this is a link or uh, this uh, mind map. It's already available on the sd.life slash notes. So I will export that into PDF format. You can, you can watch this. Uh, you can download this uh, PDF anytime. Okay. And thanks a lot for watching till now. I'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.